Howdy my fellow wooden guesses. Here's a little update on the progress of the Victory Gasifier Rebuild. You'll be amazed at what you can do with simple tools like a hammer, a wood chisel and a bit of elbow grease. You can make something like this out of solid stainless steel. Mm, okay, maybe you can't. <laughs> A very good friend of mine made this for me on his rather large industrial lathe. I attempted to do it on my lathe but it just didn't have enough horses and donkeys to get the job done. And uh, I didn't have quite the right skills and tools to get the job done either. So all those things kind of beat me up like a gang of wood gas bugs. So let's have a look at this little puppy. This used to be 5 inches, well it still is actually, 5 inches from top to foot of uh, solid bar stock stainless steel. 8 inches diameter. And what it's, uh, what's been done to it is it's been turned into a fire cone. So we've got 6 inches across the mouth of the fire cone and 1 inch of thickness untouched. We have this enormous thermal mass here and this rebate at the bottom to allow bolt heads to rise up to here. Should those bolt heads ever get stuck, and I'll show you what I mean, they can be simply cut off and new ones put on. So this mass of steel here, it's 316 stainless. And uh, when I attempted to work it on my lathe, it soon became apparent that I just couldn't do it. A very good friend of mine um, placed it upon his lathe and showed me how it was actually done, how you meant to get the job done. That's uh, my good friend is Weldon and he runs a business that he's created himself from the ground up called Intaglio Digital Engraving. I'll uh, make mention of his website either inside this video or in the description under it. He turned this blob of steel into the masterpiece you see here. This lovely smooth finish. All these safe edges that you can safely run your hands over without ripping them open. As this thing was razor sharp um, when I brought it around to him. He showed me how to make it safe and actually give it a shape that any gasifier would be proud to have inside it. Now give me a moment. That's what I'm going to do. Once that stops trying to chase me across the room, 
is place it on top of this. But while I'm at it, you may remember the previous video where I showed these discs. Six inches diameter each one of these. Uh, no, eight inches, sorry. Eight inches diameter each one of these. There are three of those. One there. And these two here. Their main purpose, other than to provide the structural integrity, is to serve also as a very solid restriction. 60 millimeters, uh, that's two and three eighths inches in old and modern measurements for the actual restriction. Each of these half inch thick, total height of the structure, including that, 12 inches. 12 inches that the gas has to travel through before it can come out through the bottom of the reduction. Now give us a moment, I'll chuck that little puppy on there. First I've got to round up some elephants to help me lift that. Alrighty then. Here it is. The burn cone, structural support and reduction zone. I need to put that on the lays being so small it'll fit on my lay without too much fuss to make a, a bit of a cone there so it opens out more at the bottom than it is at the top As at the moment you're looking at a giant version of this which has to be coned to make sure I don't get um, bridging and so on but now you can see how this all goes together down there we have what looks almost like a an aircraft toilet <laughs> or stainless steel for his and her pleasure so charcoal and all in there big burn going on in here nozzle sitting about there mm -hmm. it's going to be nice in there it's going to be wood gas bug central party time now about those bolt heads i mentioned well actually nuts i've got uh, stainless steel bolts running up through here to nuts under this little clearing here. I'm pretty sure um, the casual observer will realize that these are going to seize up in time. So the shape of this allows for you to get a grinder in here in the worst case and hack those little puppies off. And the washers of course protect the metal underneath from damage while the grinder is getting the job done. Once the grinder's done that, it's just a matter of knocking those there bolts out and chucking them away. Maybe chuck them over the neighbor's fence. <laughs> so there are eight of these little puppies to secure all of these main parts to each other. In time, I'm going to have this hot melt glued to that. Tea glue, that is. The same with this little thing. That there is going to be glued onto that. Tea glue, that is. Therefore, allow or thereby combining all these bits and all pieces to create a masterpiece in wood gas goodness. Unbeknown to one of my horses, he's gonna lose his feed bucket because that solid stainless steel that feed bucket is, that there is gonna become the grate to go under here. I'm pretty sure Mr. Horsey will say, Well that's great. Now where's my feed coming from? You can have a plastic bucket to make up for the stainless steel one. I don't think you're really going to care any. Moving on to this little piece here. Whoops, almost dropped it. We've got about one and three eighth inches diameter outside. And inside is about just a little under three, I mean, yeah, three quarters of an inchy. Just a little bit under that. My idea is to use that as the air feed or at least some portion of it is the air feed. Maybe it could be half standard steel and half stainless steel. This is 316 grade like everything else here. My idea is to feed the air from the intake down to the burn zone, about that much short of it. Then a piece of this, same diameter, but you'll notice free of holes, will be used to form a nozzle. I'll drill a ring of holes around the perimeter of it and one at its end and machine it in such a way that it just plugs into that and a bolt or something Frankenstein's neck bolt sort of thing holds it in place and what I'm hoping that will do is it'll give me a noozle that points down like it should plus also has maybe six radials going out to heat evenly 
the burn zone. This has a total height of 12 inches from cone to base, which is definitely more than 9 inches or so I used to run. It's a heck of a lot of inches for the uh, wood gas to go through. And I think that the benefit of that's going to be that you get cleaner and cooler gas coming out from the underside of this. As, uh, I think we've all come to learn that charcoal is definitely our friend. Biochar is our friend indeed when it comes to ensuring good quality clean gas. So that's how that goes. In the later part of the video, or the next half of the same video, I'll show you the interior of the gasifier and how I've modified it to facilitate placement of this. But imagine, if you will, the gasifier dropping down over this and resting on that surface there. And then bolts going up through here into a set of sockets that receive them inside the gasifier, thereby allowing this rocket assembly to be bolted to the bottom of the booster tank. Now what I'm hoping is that when I light this for the first time, it won't go anywhere near as high as any of Elon Musk's rockets. As when he lights his, they have this horrible habit of leaving the Earth and going into space. And I don't really want that to happen. Because I need it to stay down here and make electricity for little old me. <laughs> okay, at the bottom of this gasificator, I have the retainer ring that uh, allows the reactor assembly to be housed. And you'll see these steel plates here. What's not obvious is that they've been drilled and tapped to accept stainless steel bolts. 5 sixteenths of an inch or in old fashioned measurements 8 millimeters. That allows me with these eight bolts here to secure that large disc thereby holding the entire assembly in place on the floor of the gasifier. That assembly that you saw just a little bit before you're looking at about twelve hundred odd dollars worth of stainless steel on that. It's been a little bit on the spendy side I've got to admit but I think it will be worth it as uh, this gasifier in its former state has saved me thousands of dollars in, uh, well, energy bills. Since I'm not on the national grid, my alternative was to use either petrol or gasoline, whatever I could get and whatever was the cheapest. And of course, here in New Zealand, you're looking at about nine, eight to nine dollars a gallon for that uh, smelly, burny fluid. So, wood, of course, is the only way to go, as I see it. Either out of nuclear power, nah, wood much safer than nuclear power. So I think the expense of the parts I've included or added to this lately um, is well and truly justified considering the ability of this gasifier and of course it's uh, related generating equipment to save an absolute fortune especially during the winter when uh, every watt counts. So boys and girls Here's hoping you enjoyed your little old update on the progress of what I might end up calling the Phoenix. It was once the Victory Gasifier, but of course it has um, been burned down and has risen from the flames, or was at least in the process of rising from the flames, so maybe I'll call it the Victory Phoenix. <laughs> Alrighty my good friends, have you a couple of good ones. Ciao for now.